Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today, we are going to start a really fun section where we get to add in some characters to our worlds. In the past, we've been dealing with blocks and spheres and adding some objects into the world, but all those objects have been static for the most part. Uh, I know with the shapes, we could kind of change their shapes dynamically and move them around a little bit. But now what we're going to do is add in some real animated characters into our worlds. So let's dive right into the code and take a look how we do this. The first thing we're going to do is do a lot of our basic imports that we have been doing and add in our world. So I'm going to put all those in. So we have our import viz, our viz fix, our viz connect, we're enabling our physics, and uh, we are setting up our config file so we can have our grab our hand if we want it, and we're adding in our world. Now, we need to add in an avatar. Now we've done this, we did this way back in the first lesson. Uh, and we're going to add in the male avatar. If you would like to add in the female avatar, it's pretty easy just to change it to female. They're both going to behave in a very similar manner. And I'm just going to call it the avatar. And we've been using this command vizfix.addchild for everything, which will work in this case. But as we move forward in avatars, we may want to get in the habit of using the command add avatar. It's not going to make a difference here. All the blocks and code will all work the same uh, in this example, whether we use add avatar or add child. But later on, when we add some of our own avatars that we're going to find, uh, it won't work. It, the, the character will not work properly. So we want to make sure we're starting to use add avatar instead of add child. And we are just going to dive right in here. And there's a command that comes along with our avatar called state. And this allows us to set the animation state of our avatar. So let's see what this looks like. And there we go. There's our avatar. He's animated. Basically, he's following a sequence of animations that were built into him. And he's on a loop. He's just going to repeat this particular animation over and over and over again. So I built actually a little program that allow us to go through and see what all these different animations look like. So let's go ahead and dive in and see all the different things that our character can do. A uh, quick explanation of this. Uh, we did all the same stuff that we did before. I added in this kind of cool thing, I think, um, an info panel, which will give directions at the top of the screen. So it's another wizard object that we can add in. So viz info is a class, and we're adding in the info panel. And I'm going to put my directions in here, add my environment, and add my avatar again. And this time I'm just using the viz.go, so we don't have the hand in the way. Uh, I'm setting the main view. This is a little different. We haven't talked about this before, where we can set the kind of camera angle position. And I'm setting it to be a little bit further um, back and a little bit higher and I'm changing the angle a little bit so that way I can change the look and view of where my character is. And then I have a vizact method that I'm using called on key down which is going to call that particular method that's listed and pass it the parameter that is after the comma. So it takes the on key down takes three arguments. The first one is the key that we've pressed, the state, the method that we're trying to affect, avatar.state, and then the value that we're going to send. And this is a quick way for us to go through and check out all of those um, avatars. And then just at the very bottom, I'm just printing the animation time, which is again another function of um, an avatar is just has the ability to get the animation time it takes for each of those. So let's take a look and see what we got here. And I'll include this in today's uh, package. So when I press zero, I'll make this bigger, you can see zero, 
nothing happens, because that's kind of the default position. One. Just kind of an idle stance. Two, he's walking, that's useful. Three, is that kind of arm pump motion and then a yelling, kind of like he's at a concert. Four, applause. Five, he's got a little dance there. Six, he's like uh, in a fight sequence. Seven, oh, he jumps at us and then jumps back. So this is kind of a weird animation that he kind of appears back and there's no um, continuation there. There he's on the ground. Now he's just looking around. I'm going to move on to A. Picking something up. B. Running this time. C. Kind of doing a sidestep. We're going to use that one later. D. Sidestep the other way. E. And he's talking. He's not actually talking, but... He's acting like he's explaining something. And then F, he's getting something out of his pocket and he's giving it away. Okay, so those are all the animations. Now, not every avatar has every single one of these states set. Some of the built-in ones, like the duck and the pigeon, don't have all 15 of these. And you know, you, it'll just stand there and not do anything. It'll stay in basically state zero when we try to get it to do those. So feel free to go through and look at any of the avatars that are included. Uh, you can look at the female, you can look at the pigeon and see all the different kinds of things that those can do and just change the file name and you'll be able to see all the different actions. This is a useful program that allows you to go through and test out all of the actions as we go through to kind of know what the numbers do in comparison to the actual actions. Because there's no other way of actually doing that other than knowing because you wrote it. So that's what state does. It sets up a loop of the current action. But suppose we only want to execute the action one time. Well, we can switch this from state to execute. And now it will only do the action one time. So let's say we wanted to do that act execute action 2, which I think was the running action, or walking action, and you can see he just does it one time. And that's it, and stops, and then goes back to state 0. So that's execute. Now another way that we can uh, do animations is we can kind of queue them up as actions. So we can have our avatar Instead of just doing one action at a time with the execute command, we can add those actions and tell the avatar to do viz act animation one and viz act animation two. And it will do those two animations one after the other. Remember, they're happening in the same pool, and whenever actions happen in the same pool, they happen one after the other. Uh, we could be very specific here and say pool zero because that's where it is, it's in pool zero. The default is pool zero, so we didn't have to type that in. And now it's gonna do animation one and then animation two. So animation one is just standing there idle. It's a long animation, by the way. And now he's gonna go animation two, which is a real quick walk with a idle afterwards. Oh, I think the idle is still playing. Okay. Unless I have a state in there that I don't realize. Did I set the state somewhere? No? Okay. We can go through all of the actions. You remember for loops? We could go through all 15 actions if we wanted to. I kind of like the motions program a little bit better for this than doing a for loop, but you know, it's a good application of Python here. So I'm gonna play all animations by using a range value, um, zero through 15, zero is not gonna do anything. 
and we're going to do the add animation where we're going to do x plus 1. That way we're actually going to go 1 through 15 because we don't need the uh, 0. And remember, range is not going to go up to 15. It's actually going to go up to 14 and then stop. So it's going to be 0 through 14. If we add 1 to it, that gives us 1 through 15. And I'm also going to print out the different actions. I probably will stop this part way through, um, especially since idle is uh, a little bit long. And we'll be able to see that it's just going to kind of go through and do all of those different animations. I probably should have started it after one. Oh, there we go. There's Walk. He's cheering at his concert. And he basically is just going to go through all those different 15 animations. Not great transitions between them. They just kind of move from one animation to the next. Okay. I think you get the idea on that one. So we have our nice little for loop there couple additional animation effects that we can control for our avatar. We have the ability to set the animation time, which will play animation 12 in this case, and go for one and a half seconds into the animation. And then we can also set the speed. I'm going to run it at one tenth speed. So it's only going to do the first one and a half seconds of the animation at a one-tenth speed, so basically slow-mo. Really slow-mo. Oh. Oh, I actually have to do the animation. Whoops, sorry. I have to have the animation in. Animation 12, there we go. And now set, we'll set the time and all that. There we go. Okay. Um, we can affect just parts of our, um, our character. So we can modify basically the, the bones of our character, so to speak, and just move parts of our character around. So I'm going to go through and show you how to do that. First, we're going to set our avatar's position. So we're going to set the avatar's position, and we can set his angle at which he's looking at, which we can have fun with later. I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm going to set the idle pose to negative 1. Um, so that way he does not go back to animation one uh, when he's done. So that way that's that idle pose that it looked like after he was done everything, he goes back to that animation, which is the idle pose, which is why when we saw that other command when he was doing the running, he ended up back at the idle pose because that's kind of default for him. And we're going to add in an arm bone. And we got to get the arm bone based upon the name. And you can see that in the inspector that it's um, BIP01L upper arm. And then we're going to lock it. Gonna lock it into place. So what that'll do is no matter what animation is going on, that arm bone will not move. And then we're going to set the arm bone's position, its angle, basically, to 90 and 70. So let's take a look at that. So now we're just affecting the arm bone. And you can see his arm bone looks like, his arm looks weird now. That it's, it's turned at an angle and it's lower than the other arm. And if we wanted to, we can kind of put in another measurement in there, 90, and set that angle. And you can see now his arm is up in the air. He's kind of waving at us. Okay? So we can control and create our own positions just by manipulating the bones of our character. Now, the problem with this is you have to be careful because once his arm's up there, 
if we set an animation to him and just set a state, which is going to loop him at state 12, his arm stays up in the air and kind of sort of moves along. Like the parts of the animation that don't affect um, the part of the arm bone that we locked in, basically we locked in the bicep and the, from the forearm down is still part of the original animation. That part moves along with the animation as was expected, but because it's up in the air, it looks kind of weird. So we can really kind of modify those animations that we have in there by modifying um, some of the body parts while our sprite is moving. We can also do kind of um, fun things with our avatar just by changing the angle. So like this angle is really deals with the direction in which he's facing, but we could throw him onto the ground by affecting that angle. And we can see now he's kind of, you know, throwing a tantrum on the ground, face down on the ground. Um, we could flip him around on his back if we wanted to by setting it to 180. Hopefully that flips him on his back. There we go. Oh, nope, it flips him totally upside down and now he's walking on the ceiling. Uh, let's do, um, I think 270 will get him there. Let's see. We try a negative angle too, but I think 270 will flip him all the way around. There he is, now he's on his back. So we can affect and run the animation no matter what position he is in. And last, the last thing I wanted to look at is speech. We can actually get our character to talk to us, which is really great for some of those games um, where we run into a character. And the command is vizact.speak, and I'm going to assign that action to a speech variable. You can call it anything you want. I'm going to call it speech. The file I've chosen here is a JFK file, and it must be a WAV file. And then we can set some things like threshold and scale. This has to do with the way the mouth moves and we're setting sync to be true because we want the mouth to move with the voice. Uh, this scale has to be really small, otherwise the, it has weird effects to the face. And then finally, we're just gonna add the action to the avatar. And if we wanted to, we could set the state to one and it'll be kind of like in that idle position. Um, I think, what was the state where he was talking? Was that, let's try this, let me just refresh my memory. I think it was, no, um, was it A? No, B, C, D, E, it was E, which if we look at our listing here, E was action 14. So I think I'm gonna switch this to action 14. That'll make sense for a speech, I think. And let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how that works. Remarks of the president at the swearing in of his junior cabinet, East Room of the White House, January 29th, 1961. Now, it does play all the sounds. Do justice. And, uh, Mr. Vice President, I want to, uh, Welcome all of you here to the uh, this reception. The purpose was to complete okay, the swearing so close in. That. You can also record your own sounds uh, as long as you save them as .wav files. Uh, the program I like to use is called Audacity, and it is free to download. You do have to make sure that you're recording it as mono. Make sure it's not stereo. It's going to cause problems if we record it as stereo. So um, I'm set, I have set this up to a mono recording channel. And I'm just going to put a little test in here. Uh, I might cause a problem because I'm recording with two pieces of software. Testing one, two, check two, check two. Testing one, two. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to export that as a WAV file. I want to make sure I'm saving it as a WAV file. And I'm going to do, we'll go up here. test.wav, save that, 
and that's it. No, nope, I don't want to save the project. And I'm just going to switch this from JFK to test and run it. And now you'll see it'll have my voice. One, two, check two, check two, testing one. Okay. So you can add in anything you want and have your characters speak within your story. That is all I have for you today. I uh, hope you have fun adding in your avatars and adding some actions and playing with them. I will see you next time.